I'm just doing what I do every morning, getting the talking liquid in. I'm splattering. What the heck? Oh no! What's going on? Oh no! It's happening again! My mug had a big crack in it! <laughs> Good thing I caught it. Can you see that crack? I think I know what happened. Yesterday, I I knocked it over on the countertop and I thought, oh gosh, did I break it? And I didn't see a crack, but I think I may have weakened it a little bit. And then when I put it in the dishwasher, I think that is what, I think that is what did it in. But good news, Mickey came in clutch. All right, a little mini haul. I got a few items from iHerb. Decided I wanted to start adding spirulina to my smoothies. It is packed with nutrients, so I got this Earth Circles brand. I've gotten a few things from this brand, I think. Speaking of marine life, I have been on a dulse kick. I love dulse. This is a type of sea vegetable. It's red. If you've ever had seaweed before, but you've never had dulse, I encourage you to check it out. It is very delicious. It's salty and slightly sweet tasting. But unlike other types of sea vegetable, like seaweeds, it's not crunchy. It's actually kind of soft. Anyways, it's got a lot of iron in it, and it also has a good amount of vitamin C. I also got some pumpkin seed protein. I rather enjoy throwing this into smoothies. It's just pumpkin seeds, cold pressed pumpkin seed powder. It's good. It does kind of taste like pumpkin seeds, so if you don't like pumpkin seeds, then you will not like this. I got this because why not? I love monk fruit, and this is the pumpkin spice flavored monk fruit drops from Now Real Food, so I look forward to adding that into various in a sundry. Big fan of this Grab Green Power Degreaser, the citrus, or but sorry, the tangerine with lemongrass scent. This is really good, um, highly recommend it. I currently also have their, this, the all-purpose cleaner, thyme, and fig leaf. I really like it a lot. Then from the Amazonian, I am going to be baking a cake next weekend. I need to transport it. So I decided to just go all out with the supplies. I ordered some silicone cake molds and I'm gonna be icing the cake. So I got some cake rounds to do that on. <laughs> they weren't too expensive by Wilton. Then I got this leveler for making the layers nice and even. And because I need to transport it, I got this Sterlite cake carrying case. There's a nice handle on it. I'm here in Cool Linscombe, which is a gift shop because I need to get a gift. Let's grab a basket. Oh, that looks like a good children's book, Nutcracker Night. Y'all know my obsession with all things Nutcracker. I love those lamps. Those are festive. Oh, they got their Christmas tree up here with all the Texas ornaments. Be a good gift. Oh, look at the avocado one. Isn't that cute? The turkey is stately. These placements. I'm over here in the candles, of course. Do you guys ever use these fragrance diffusers instead of candles? I kind of think about trying those from time to time. Beekman was all over QVC for a while. And I get a lot of questions. Is goat's milk good in skincare? Um, it's not bad. Goat's milk 
natural source of lactic acid, which is a humectant, can soften dry skin cell edges. It's probably very low concentration in goat's milk. But I think they have a fragrance-free whipped body cream. Have you guys tried this? This is a tester, I think. You seem kind of weird to stick your finger in here. I don't know. Like, why is there a tester of... Is this a lip balm? It seems sus to test out a lip balm. I don't know about that. Looks like even Cool and Scum has their own body scrub with rose. I suggest avoiding those. It can dry out the skin. Some of this charcoal and a salt soak. That's probably relaxing. I think a nice gift. Ew, I love this. It is a simmered cider candle in this cute little copper mug. Well, it's always a pleasant time shopping in there. Cool Linscombe. Yeah, whenever I need a gift, I always go there because I like shopping there because it's local. And I feel like I can find some unique stuff there. This makes for a nice gift. So I highly recommend it. Cool Linscombe. It's massive, a massive store. I have like jewelry, skincare stuff, um, candles, a ton of candles. And they have a lot of like cute specialty children's toys. And what else? Clothing, shoes. It's really well curated. All right, I'm gonna have a matcha tea now and I'm gonna try out these new pumpkin spice drops that I got from iHerb. Actually, on first whiff, it smells good. All right, let me grab my Sun Goddess packet here. A few drops, there we go. good if you are someone who is not into the pumpkin spice obsession from starbucks i don't know i don't know what it is that starbucks has created with their pumpkin spice latte there's nothing well honestly i haven't had one in several years so i should just shut my mouth but this actually tastes like legitimate spices that you would put in like a pumpkin pie and it has a hint of a pumpkin undertone but I'm definitely getting some nutmeg. This is good. I'm getting some cinnamon. It doesn't taste artificial and it's not sickeningly sweet, which I find to be the case most often with monk fruit. Monk fruit is one of my favorite sugar alternatives. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. I should have ordered another one, but who am I kidding? I'm probably going to put in another iHerb order sometime soon. I buy a lot of pantry staples on iHerb. Love my matcha though. I have really been, I know I keep saying this, but I have really been into matcha lately. Oh my gosh, you guys, you are not on the tripod straight. <laughs> surprise, surprise, that is always the case. I don't know. I don't know what I expect from the tripod. Like I have to put it on there correctly. It's not gonna do it for me. Anyways, hey, I just hopped out of the shower, finished my skincare routine. Coming in with my CeraVe healing ointment, per usual, to my lips. Oh man, I've been, like I said, really on the tea latte game lately. It's been my jam. But one thing about the turmeric, turmeric in general, but I've been having a lot of turmeric lattes. Turmeric seems to irritate my mouth ever so slightly, whether I'm eating it in foods, curries, soups, you name it. And the tea latte, I notice I've got to be extra, extra vigilant with my CeraVe healing ointment because if you think about it, when you're consuming spicy, uh, spice laden things that are hot, you have the steam that kind of condenses around your mouth 
and that spice mixture can kind of end up causing some irritation. I think that's what happens to me a lot with turmeric in particular, or if I get overzealous with cinnamon, because I love putting cinnamon on everything, but I noticed, like I, I figured out that at one point I was having a lot of irritation around my mouth, and part of it was the mask. When um, masks were first implemented, I was developing some irritation, and I thought it, mostly it was due to the mask, but then I started figuring out, well, I am consuming a lot of cinnamon in like drinks and why not? Because I love cinnamon. I mean, it just elevates things. And I think that was another spice. But <clears throat> yeah, people are always quick to jump to the conclusion that it's their skincare products causing problems for them. But things that you come in contact with in your environment can be causing a problem. For example, y'all know I have eczema and recently, pair of socks I don't know you know wool I don't wear but wool I don't wear it because it's not vegan and I also don't wear it because if you have eczema wool is like notoriously horrific it's like an inciting factor but anyways I had on this pair of socks that I've had for kind of a while but I don't wear it that often it's like one of the like silly socks and for whatever reason it, they weren't wool socks for whatever reason, there was something in the socks that just kicked off a flare of my eczema on my lower legs, right under where the socks were. As a matter of fact, where the elastic was kind of, because the flare kicked off or started having having a lot of itch when I was, I was standing outside and it was warm. And heat is always something that can kick off a flare of like any skin problem because of the vasodilation, but in particular eczema, it's one thing. So it was that, and plus something in the socks, because the eczema was ex just localized to, at first, just localized to where the socks were. But boy, it was, I actually caved and started scratching, which I always, 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 you know, try and tell you guys to apply chilled moisturizer, rub in a circle to not scratch. But I was out, I didn't have like chilled moisturizer or anything, and I wasn't even paying attention. I started scratching, I could not stop. If you have eczema, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once you start, you can't stop scratching. And it feels like, the only way I can describe it is, if you've ever been, if you've ever been somewhere and you have to pee really badly, you're holding it, you're holding it, you're holding it, and like it gets to the point where it starts being like, painful and you're rushing and you finally make it to the bathroom and you're able to <laughs> pee and you know that sense of like ah oh, that sense of relief when you're finally able to urinate <laughs> sounds gross but yeah it's the same feeling once you start scratching it's that that like sense of release and you can't stop but scratching Scratching is problematic though for a number of reasons. When it comes to eczema, scratching incites more release of those itch compounds. So it's basically just like putting the gas on itch. And of course, if your nails aren't clean, it can introduce bacteria, pathogens. Of course, you can develop a secondary skin infection, but even just, you know, kind of harmless things can end up being, you know, irritating as the skin is being abraded by your fingers. And plus you've got all the inflammatory milieu acting up in there from the eczema. And then it causes the skin thickening. So if you chronically scratch your eczema, it becomes what's referred to as lichenified, which is thickening and skin thickening. And now that can happen in other, that can happen outside of eczema. People can develop skin thickening, lichenification from other things, chronic rubbing, like the elbows and knees referred to as a frictional dermatosis. But anyways, yeah, all of that to say, I, I ended up having a flare of my eczema on my lower legs. It's always on my lower legs. I don't know what it is about the local environment on my lower legs, but that is a hot spot for me, quite literally, because it feels hot as it's starting to flare. But I was able to get it under control and, you know, put moisturizer on and it's fine now. But when I scratch, my lower legs in particular, and this is a ghost for anyone, when you scratch, you may notice that your you get if it's hot as it was in this case <clears throat> the skin uh it's almost like you get linear elevated hive hives it's called dermatographism skin writing because the mast cells are so 
quite literally, they're releasing the histamine. So anywhere where you stroke, it's going to release histamine. You get a hive basically in the shape of, you know, whatever you've scratched. And so I was having dramatic graphism as I'm scratching, I'm getting like, you know, linear, what are called wheels, hives, um, where I'm scratching. But yeah, stopping scratching is, is tough. Once you get going, oh man, it, it is really bad. But, um, and plus, so I think, you know, one thing I'm kind of wondering is if it's not, if there wasn't a dye in the sock, because there was blue in the sock pattern, and blue dyes can be a problem for some people with eczema. That can be a flare, a trigger. And for me personally, I have always found that I have to be careful with blue jeans. Does anybody call them blue jeans or do they just call them jeans now? But blue, the blue dyes in a lot of jeans. Like when I get a new pair of jeans, I have to wash them before I wear them because the dye is like a lot more intense in a new pair of jeans. Anyways, jeans are, are one like right now I'm, kind of recovered from the little flare that I had, but I would not be wearing jeans anytime soon. Um, so dyes are, are another one. But, so I was initially launching into this explanation about my little eczema flare, telling you guys that it's not always a skincare product that causes a problem. So for me, it was this particular sock, something in the fabric, I don't know. But other people, it might be things that your clothing is treated with, formaldehyde resins if you have a sensitivity or an allergy to formaldehyde you can develop a rash especially like in the on the sides up under the arms where you've got skin on skin contact with your clothes rubbing that is a place where you can develop a rash from your clothing um, and then you can develop rashes from like things in sofas the material stuff that you know they used to treat the sofa fabrics you can develop rashes too. So it's not always skincare products. And of course, skincare products are not always the solution to all skin problems either. Although the skincare industry would just have you believe that they have all of life's answers <laughs> in a bottle. Uh, sometimes it's merely just avoiding the thing that caused the problem in the first place and you don't need a special product to do that anyways i hope you guys are having a great day thank you so much for following along today on the vlog if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye